last time I vlogged was when I was at the park trying to finish up with my second year report and, you know I told you that I was getting back to the lab so there were lots of things that I had to um, put together and organize and plan for my experiments so I finally submitted my second year report um, three days ago on Friday basically so that's around 7th of August and if you can remember the deadline for the second year report was 10th of July or was it 10th yeah I think 10th or 9th of July the Friday the second Friday in July and what happened was that I asked the grad admin team at my department for an extension so I told you guys at that time that I was almost done with my second year reports because I was around 70% done so what happened is that um, when you write the second year report it's not really like an official thing at least for my department the second year report is not an official thing so the first year report is more of like the official thing where you have a viva and all of that before you are registered as a PhD student it's more or less like a pro progress check for yourself and also for your supervisor so you're supposed to have a meeting and talk about the future so the, the, the issue that I had with my secondary report was that even though I had you know written about all the things that all the optimization experiments that I had done for the past year there were a few bottlenecks in my future work section so my future work didn't have all of the details like it was summarized basically and I think I was just getting tired when I was writing the secondary report I was getting tired and by the time I got to the last section which is the future work I just like listed three or four things that I hoped to do so when my boss went through the the um, the final version when I wanted to send it in on 10th of July um, then she left a few comments here and there but then she also talked about the um, future section she was like it's not as detailed as she would have um, wanted it to be I, I didn't even know that it was an issue so I later discovered that the reason why it was not detailed was also because I wasn't so sure of how I wanted to progress in my um, project so I was a bit confused and because I was confused for the I think two or three weeks so in July right so 10th of July I was deadline so I think for the rest of July I was just you know reading papers and looking for evidence to support the best way that I'd like to proceed with my project so um, because I wasn't sure and I was a bit confused that was why my my future section was in detail so after when I went through literature and then I, I went back to my boss and then we had another meeting to talk about the things that I'm thinking of doing moving forward and then we, we had uh, meetings back and forth and then eventually we sort of found I, I sort of figured out a plan for myself so I figured out like the project plan and my timelines okay these are the next experiment that I want to do and these are the backup experiments and all of that so it was just for me to be able to understand what I'm planning to do next and if I'm stuck dis discuss it with my boss which I did thankfully so now that I'm done with the second year report I submitted it I, I figured that it will have been this would be the best time for me to pick up the camera back to just tell you guys about that so now what I'm doing, as I mentioned to you guys before, um, my, my project is divided into two parts. So the first part I mentioned to you guys, I really wanted to finish it before June. So I still haven't finished that part. So what I'm doing now is that I'm trying to round up on that part of the study. And for that part, I'm going to be working with over like around 100 samples or around let's say 100 to 140 or 130 samples so if you're wondering like what was I doing in July when I wasn't here right because you know I was working from home for the rest of July and that was because also like because I knew that I was planning a large-scale experiment like as I said over 100 around 100 to 140 samples I knew that I had to plan extensively to the tiniest details because any mistake could you know mess the whole thing up because I can't handle 100 samples at once so I divided it into I think five days no I divided it into six so I divided it into six batches and then for each day I would do um, 15 samples each just because I feel like 15 is probably the max that I can handle at the moment and also some of the samples are very precious because the concentration is very very low so I have to be super careful with those samples because I don't have excess of them and if I make any mistake that's it so that's why I decided that I was not going to do the you know 100 samples at once because that's going to be a bit overwhelming for me so now I divided it into batches and now um, I started my experiment today is Sunday right um, so I started my experiment Saturday so I did the batch A on Saturday and now I'm doing today I'm doing the batch B and then on Monday all the way to Thursday I will finish the different batches and inshallah fingers crossed everything goes well and the data is good enough otherwise I don't know what will happen so yeah that's basically what I'm doing in case you're wondering what exactly my experiments are so basically I'm making DNA libraries so as I mentioned to you guys earlier I don't want this to be like a lecture kind of talk but essentially I have my DNA and then I want to send them for sequencing so I can't send them directly 
as DNA. So what I need to do now is to make libraries from them, call them DNA libraries, and basically that's the format that is needed in order to be able to sequence the DNA samples from the cancer patients. So now that's what I'm doing essentially. So I'm, um, I started working today around, I think I left home around um, 7, past 7. So I've been working since around 7.30 a.m. It's currently around 11.49. So I'm sort of, I wouldn't say I'm midway. Let's say like I've done a quarter of what I need to do today. So now I have my timer here which will go off in a few minutes. But now I'm going to go back to my experiment and I'll just take you guys along. I don't know if I'll be able to vlog the entire week but I will try my best to do so. But yeah, essentially I will just take you guys um, with me as I do this large cohort of samples and hopefully everything goes well. So I decided to film the time lapse of my whole day. So it means that this clip of me doing my experiment will run for a very long time. So it wouldn't be me summarizing how the day went, but rather I'd show you exactly like how the day went, but in a like fast pace. So I'll just try to say what I exactly I'm doing at each point. So in this part here, you can see that I'm pipetting some liquid into each of the tubes. So each of the small tubes that you're looking at there has my DNA samples in them. So after that, I was trying to look for my pipette boxes and then I started to pipette the barcode. So I need the barcodes to be able to identify what sample is what sample. So the barcodes are located in that plate that you see there with aluminum foil on it. So as I poke each well i piped the barcode and transferred it into the dna sample so now i put it back into the pcr machine and then i leave it there for a while hi guys um it's currently 2 10 so basically i just finished i finished with the first one and a half ish part of the protocol that's what you saw i put it in the pcr machine for the last pcr step to finish i went to pray my load so i got back oops that's the timer i got back not too long ago from food and i ate sandwich for lunch so now i'm going to go back to the last step which is the purification step of the pcr products so i'll do that and then i'll do the qc upstairs and then i'll call it a day so I'll take you guys along. So, so after the PCR amplification, I return my PCR product to this bench. The purification is based on using Ampure beads and I'll show you these beads later on in one of my last or second to the last clip. So what I'm doing here essentially is using the Ampure beads to purify the PCR product to such that I can remove all of the impurities, all of the DNA fragments that were not ligated to adapters because in order for the sequencing to happen, the DNA fragments have to be ligated to adapter. So what this um, purification step does is that it removes all of the DNA fragments that are not ligated to an adapter. After purifying, then I can then run those DNA libraries through QC. That's quality control because these are the libraries that would be sequenced. So that's essentially what I was doing there. In order to do the purification, I need ampere beads and I need ethanol. So I'm just pipetting all of the ampere beads and the ethanol back and forth.
at this point I had finished purifying all of my 15 to 19 samples so I need to run it through QC so in order to run to, through QC I had to create new PCR tubes that the QC reagent would go into and then I would have to pipette about one microliter of my DNA libraries into the same tubes and then it's that one microliter that I will use for my QC to see if the libraries were properly formed so stay tuned for the result from the quality control so after when I finished perpetuating all of my samples into the small small tubes I carried them upstairs to the second floor where I ran them through the tape station machine Surely this experiment takes me almost six hours or even more sometimes so I only get to have I think 30 minutes break in between and that's it This is the tape station machine and yeah, this is just me putting in all of the metadata information about my sample so that I'm able to identify the samples later on when I get the QC data. So after putting in the metadata information, I put in the samples in the tubes into the machine. After putting those in the machine, I remove the lead because I do not want the lead there or otherwise the machine will crash. So I gently remove the lead. And then after removing the lead, I close the machine and then I run the tape station. What I showed you earlier was me basically running my QC. So every time I, I make the DNA libraries for sequencing, I have to run quality control to check the um, quality of the DNA libraries, if they're good enough for sequencing. If they're not good enough, I'll have to repeat it. I mentioned to you guys that I, I can only run 15 samples in one go just because I don't want it to be overwhelming. So from the batch, from the 15 samples that I had run yesterday, four samples were problematic when I checked the QC. So I had to repeat for those four samples today. So in addition to the 15 samples, that, 15 new samples that I was running today, I ran four old samples that had problems with so altogether i have 19 samples so the issue is now that i used the tape station the instrument that you saw me using upstairs just a while ago for quality control it's going to take about 10 to 12 minutes before i can get the gel data so i just want to clear this place up a bit so that once i'm finished i'll go back upstairs export the data and then i can show you a bit how it looks like So I've just finished running the second batch of samples as I mentioned to you. I'll show you the data in a bit. I just want to... So I was scanning my... Um, I think the Quran I'm listening to is quite loud. Um, so I was scanning my... I scanned my some of my slides over the weekend and I left it at the Axio scanner, the image scanner area. So what I'm going to do now is to pick up the slides and I bring them back into the box. So I'll do that and then I'll come back and then tell it walk you guys through the data. Usually I use like stained so um, stained slides to sort of guide my microdissection because when I microdissect I microdissect blank tissues that are not stained. So these are the stained slides and basically I don't have to scan them if I don't want to. But the reason why I'm scanning them now is because I know that once I start writing my thesis I, I could there could be some situations where I need there could be some situations that warrants that I need to see the images and if it's not digitalized it would be very tricky for me because I already have more than 30 or 40 of these boxes and each box contains 100 slides so it get very hard to keep up with stuff if I just rely on the physical boxes so that's why every time I 
start working with a new patient case or I start um, yeah anytime I start working with a new patient case I always make sure that once I have them stained I have them scanned and digitalized somewhere such that I can refer back to the to those images if I need to do that in the future um, so yeah the reason why I have my laptop here is because I need to um, I have my spreadsheet work that has all of the slides arranged um, such that you know what slide is in which row because each box I don't know if you guys have ever seen this closely up to 100 rows so one slide has to be put into each row basically so um, I already have it um, in my spreadsheet what slides are in what rows numbered from 0 to 100 so now I need to just look at my spreadsheets to see um, which rows the slides belong to and then we arrange it back in the order that I have already documented so that it's easy for me to go back to it if I need to go back to it in the future so that's what I'll just do now so when I was filming the part where I was arranging the slides um, my battery died as usual um, so I wasn't able to film the whole part but now I'm done arranging the slides here's the box so this is the name of the study, Oscar, that the patient samples belong to. So I have that done. So now I just want to show you guys the tape images. My Sunday is almost gone. So yeah, I'll show you the gel images now. This is how the gel images look like after my experiment today. I don't know if you guys can remember, but my first, for my first vlog, I mentioned to you guys that any band that you see here represents DNA. And these DNA sample, these DNA fragments would then be sequenced. So if there is no band, that means that there is no DNA, and means that you experiment or something wrong with it. So, but the only issue now that I am spotting is that some samples have multiple bands, meaning that there could be contamination. So, for example, you can see that there are double bands for D2 in comparison to the A2, for example, where you don't see any um, band. So, I'm quite worried about those. So, if you look at them, so this this peak here means that there's a lot of DNA um, libraries that I want to sequence between um, 200 base pairs to about. 600 or 700 base pairs ish and the average base pair is 250 for that region i don't know if all of this is making sense to you guys and i'm sorry if i'm not very basic today but i'm just so so, so tired that i can't i can't bring myself to explain the basic part of it i hope it still makes sense in some way but anyways these are the samples that i'm having problems with and i'm worried about so i will most likely have to I don't know what happened to those samples but the others look quite good so that's that's good if you can see from b1 to e1 with the four samples that i ran out of the 25 samples yesterday that i had problems with so i had to repeat for those samples thankfully thankfully i had excess of those samples so i could repeat the experiment and you can see that the bands that i got today were better in terms of concentration so the concentration that i got in the past was really really bad like if you look at it look at it was so bad this is the okay no this is nothing this is the first sample this is the second sample third sample the, the concentrations were really really bad so i repeated it today this is the repeated one today the repeated one today the repeated one today and you can see that they're good again i'm having problems with i think i'm almost certain that they are primer dimers and yeah um so yeah, all along the, the results for the experiment were not that bad. Alhamdulillah. At least I got like DNA libraries in comparison to yesterday where I was just wondering what in the world happened to those four samples. So the problem that I, as I mentioned to you guys is that the contamination I'm having. So I ha I'll probably have to re-purify the samples once more. It could be that the so whenever I purify my DNA libraries, I use some type of beads. And it could be that because the beads are supposed to expire in two months, so I don't know if it's the beads I think you need to have primer dimer contaminations. But that said, you can still see that there's some samples that didn't have the contamination, so I doubt if it's beads. But anyways, um, it's a problem, yes, but it's a problem that I can try to overcome. I'm sorry, guys, if today was not very exciting. I hope that you found it interesting. It's just my very um, monotonous Sunday trying to catch up with work and my deadlines. Um, I hope you found it interesting. I'll try my best to vlog all through the rest of the week if I can. If I can't, at least I'll try to vlog towards the end when I'm done with the 70 or 80 more samples that I have to run. And like I tell you guys how it went. Already currently 
So when I get home, I think I'm just going to rest because I am, like I was here on Saturday. I'm here today, and I'm going to be here for the rest of the week. So yeah, it's going to be a very long week for me. I can't wait for the weekend already, and it's just Sunday. <laughs> Anyways, um, I would go back. I'll cycle back home now, and I'll catch you guys whenever I pick up the camera again. Bye for now.